Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Sentry for the Nintendo Switch. Now just before we get started, as usual, if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And as usual, all comments are welcome, please leave them down below. So now Sentry is a budget twin stick shooter that just released for the Nintendo Switch for the budget price of only $2.49. Now first let's talk about the general gameplay. If you've never played a twin stick shooter before, well the design of this game is very minimalistic and very straightforward. It's very easy to pick up because basically it's not any more difficult than the left joystick controls your ship, which is this case a triangle with a pixelated trail behind it, and the right stick controls firing your weapon, which is once again sort of pixelated beams. The main point of the game in Sentry is basically surviving as long as possible while eliminating as many enemies as possible as well. And all this is done by navigating through a field that is basically delimited by round markers. Now first I'd like to go through a few things that this game really has working for it because it does have some very good points about it. Now the first thing that this game really has working for it is its control scheme because although it's minimalistic it's very responsive it's very tight and that's exactly what you want for a twin stick shooter. When you die it's always because you made a false maneuver not because the stick didn't respond properly. And furthermore they really went all out in integrating haptic feedback to the control scheme because basically in this game if you're using a controller that has haptic feedback or the joy cons on your original switch well basically you will feel every shot every kill and even it'll help in your overall performance because although you can maybe tell from the gameplay, you can not fire off your weapon in an unlimited fashion. Eventually it needs to either cool down or reload. It's not too clear which one it is in the game. And there's only two ways of knowing when it's time for that. Either an audio cue from the game or a haptic cue from the feedback. And I'll tell you that if you're using haptic feedback, you will respond much quicker and you'll be able to flow much better through the gameplay. Now such a full implementation of haptic feedback on such a budget title really really impressed me a lot. Now it does come with a slight downside though. If you're using a controller that doesn't have haptic feedback or if you're playing the game on a Switch Lite that doesn't have it built in, well unfortunately you're going to be losing out on that perspective of the game. Secondly, the overall visual design of the game really works for me. I find it visually appealing and if you know what I'm talking about, I'm getting serious Asteroids vibes from the old Atari era. Now of course the graphics in this game are much clearer and much more fleshed out, but if you've played that old game in the old era, I really find that the way the enemies explode, the way the presentation is made, you get serious vibes of that old Atari game. Also the design on the enemy AI is really great. Basically. The visual appeal is very simple on each character design, but the patterns are very distinct. You have your pawns that are your cannon fodder, and it goes all the way up to your carriers, which try to swarm you with smaller enemies. And that's basically how the game rewards you and how you know that you're advancing further and further. Because as you survive longer, you get a wider variety of enemy AI attacking you. So the basic structure of this game works pretty well. We have great controls, we have an original use of haptic feedback, we have very nice visuals, and we have a decent cast of enemy AI. However, this game is hampered with some major drawbacks. And it does feel like this game was once again a missed opportunity, because some of the drawbacks I think is could have easily been resolved once again by putting a little more effort into the game. First, let's come back to the visuals. The base of the visuals on the game are amazing. However, they never change. And that's part of the problem. If you're playing one or two games, at first you'll be amazed by the beautiful visuals, although they're simplistic, but they're sort of simplistic to a fault. It's okay to go for a overall simplistic design, but they're not even offering a second stage, a second background, not even a change of color palette from one playthrough to the next. So if you start playing multiple, multiple, multiple games, unfortunately the visual appeal sort of gets lesser and lesser 
because it just never changes. Also, the soundtrack to the game, although it works at first, and let's just listen to it for a few seconds. Trust me, after a half hour, 45 minutes of hearing that soundtrack on repeat, it sort of loses its luster and there's no second soundtrack that you can switch to or that the game would automatically rotate between and that's just too simplistic in my opinion. And trust me, I haven't played just two, three games of this. I've played over 20 to 30 games now and you know, which gives over like four to five hours of back-to-back -back gameplay on this game. Trust me, the visuals and the sound need a little bit of variety to keep the game fresh and keep you coming back to it for more and more games. Now, overall, I don't want to knock them for going for a minimalistic design, but as I said, there's minimalistic and then there's minimalistic to a fault. When you're going so minimalistic that you're actually penalizing the potential of your game, that's where in my opinion, it starts becoming, you know, a negative point rather than something your game can be praised for. Now, there is one last point that actually I think surprised me and disappointed me the most is that the game has no way of tracking your progress. There's no leaderboard. There's no high score. Basically, the only thing you get is when you die, you sort of get a brief description of how many enemies you killed. And unless you take it upon yourself to screenshot each one of your death screens, you have no idea if you're doing better or worse than before. And in such a simple game, where the only premise and the only reason you come back is try to survive longer or kill more enemies, to not have a progression chart built into the game, in my opinion, is a real missed opportunity. Because it's the only reason someone plays a game like this is to try to do better than the time before. So unfortunately, that's sort of the story of this game. The first half hour to 45 minutes, I was really impressed with this game. And I was really stoked that I was going to be, you know, praising this game overall. But as I played it more and more, I fell less in love with it just because it felt unfinished. It felt like a first step in a game that needs to go further. Because like I said that before, the base of this game is awesome. You know, the basics to build off of, the controls, the base visuals, the AI are fantastic. So if you just go that little extra mile in adding, you know, like I said, a leaderboard, even an online leaderboard would be awesome. Or on the other hand, you could just throw in a couple of different stages or even just different color palettes with two or three alternating soundtracks and you have yourself a pretty solid game overall. So now we're gonna get to the final verdict on this game. And if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, just to let you know, I don't use a numerical score for my games. I use basically a general statement that explains what my position is on purchasing this game. And if you wanna see what the scale is, well, the full description of the different statements are in the description of the video. So you can see where it is on the rating scale. And this game, is going to fall into the some people might like it category. Basically, if you're really into twin stick shooters and you've played all the other ones on the Switch, well, at least all the better ones on the Switch, well, you know what? Give this one a go. For only $2.49, it isn't bad. But if you're not into twin stick shooters, or if you want to try out your first one, there are way better choices on the Nintendo Switch. So now that's pretty much it for our review of Sentry for the Nintendo Switch. So as I said earlier, don't forget to hit the like button if you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Oh, and don't forget to activate that notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.